Hello, this is Dr. Soleimani with Avicenna Medical. I wanted to discuss today one topic that seems to be um, very controversial in a sense that nobody really knows and there's a lot of media coverage and that is actual testing for COVID-19. So you'll hear on the news about PCR testing, rapid antibody testing, there's a 10 minute test, a one day test and pretty much I would say 99.9% .9 of the population do not know the differences between the tests available and what they mean and how are they even used in response to your current condition and symptoms. So I wanted to make this um, a very simplified discussion on testing so we can clarify our, our patients. Um, we've had a lot of calls of patients requesting rapid testing, believing that it's a one all be all. And the best way I can describe any of these tests are that they're just tools. And just like you can't use one tool for everything, you know, I can't use a screwdriver instead of a drill or a saw, they all have their own positives and negatives. Think of these tests as the same way. And the two tests that you will continue to hear in the coming days and weeks and months, most likely, are what we call PCR testing and antibody testing, which is done in a very rapid fashion. So you'll just hear rapid antibody testing. So PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. And that is when, whether we're doing a nasal pharyngeal or pharyngeal or sputum collection, that is what is done that takes a long time. And as you see, you know, anywhere between three to 10 days, we've been getting our results back in about three days. But that is when the PCR process or testing is actually amplifying millions of times and looking for any strands of the actual virus itself. So this is not whether you have recovered from it. This is literally looking for the bad guy. And if the bad guy is not there, it's going to come back as negative. So does it have 100% accuracy? Absolutely not. And there are reasons for that. Um, it takes a while for the virus to replicate and divide in your body and infect other cells to a point enough where even when we do a sample that it would turn positive. Pretty much most studies show that from the time of exposure, it takes about two or three days before your PCR, which is the most earliest form of uh, test detection becomes positive, which means that if you hugged somebody yesterday or you had lunch with somebody today or even two days ago, coming in for any kind of testing would not be beneficial at all because no test can detect it that early. So that's that. And we know that somewhere around days seven to 10 after exposure, your body gets rid of the virus to the point that now it's not available by PCR testing because it's actually looking for the virus in your sputum or your nasal pharyngeal area. And if the virus isn't there, it's going to come back as negative. So if you only use the PCR test and it's been seven to 10 days after your um, symptoms or exposure have started, then it's very likely that your PCR may come back negative. Now what happens is, usually five days after exposure, your body starts to produce antibodies. Now the first antibody that is produced is the IgM, and three to four days after that, we have another one called the IgG, and they overlap. And what happens, the IgM antibody drops off earlier than the IgG, and IgG can stay sometimes even two, three, four months, or even longer. So the rapid antibody testing can be used with extreme confidence and sensitivity if the patient has been symptomatic more than seven days. So what I'm going to do is, since I'm a very visual person, I'm going to refer to the graphics representation that Henry Schein has sent us so I can discuss this further and I know you will appreciate and understand the process much more. This is a great illustration and it is provided by Henry Schein, the manufacturers that have the one of the first rapid testing, and it shows how and when and what time these different antibodies are developed in the body. If you look at here, and this is what we want to keep in mind, is that this is actual exposure, and day five is onset of symptom. Pretty much most studies show that it takes somewhere between five to seven days for symptoms to be developed um, after exposure. 
This yellow area is where PCR testing and PCR testing, as I mentioned, is what actually looks for the strands of virus itself. And that's when it becomes very useful. If you notice here, you can see that between days zero to two, there is really not even any virus present. So if you just hugged somebody yesterday or you were exposed to somebody two days ago, even a PCR test will not most likely be extremely accurate to rule you out. Does that mean that some people may not be positive? Of course, but we want to, you know, high confidence to make sure that we're not missing anybody out. So even with PCR testing, you really start, do not turn positive until after day three or so, as you can see that the viral load in the body becomes enough where we can actually detect the virus itself. So that yellow area is the period where PCR testing is extremely useful. But if you look, essentially from the time the symptoms start, and if you look right here around between days 10 to 15, so which is now this is five to seven days after symptoms start, the virus and the viral load rapidly starts to drop off on its own to the point that after about 10 days after your symptoms start, so if you really look at day five as day zero when your symptoms start, around day seven to 10 after your symptoms start, your PCR may actually be negative. So if you only do a PCR testing, it is going to falsely look like you are negative, but you may not be. So this is where antibody testing comes in. And the first antibody that is always uh, produced in response to a virus are what we call your IgM antibody. And if you look, the IgM antibodies uh, are being produced here around day seven or eight after onset of symptoms. And four to five days after that, your IgG, which is this green line that you see, gets produced. So when we do an antibody testing, we can look if someone's IgM is positive and their IgG is negative, it means that they're in this very short window and they're still infectious most likely. If their IgG and IgM are both positive, they could be you know, essentially anywhere along this line. And to confirm whether they're actually infectious or not, you would do a PCR testing, and if the PCR is negative, which is this yellow uh, part of the infectious process, then we know that the virus is out of their system because their PCR is negative, but they've had a past exposure and they've actually developed the good antibodies and are essentially immune now for at least one to two years based on current data. So I hope this explains that one test does not cover the other one. So just showing up and saying, hey, I want a rapid test um, does not necessarily answer your questions and it takes um, the right provider or physician to explain this um, to a patient. So for very early detection, PCR is a great choice, uh, but again, after days seven or 10 after your symptoms start, then the PCR most likely will be negative, and that's where antibody testing comes in. So the easiest way for me to split this is if you're someone that wants to rule out an early infection or exposure, you want PCR testing. Now, however, many of our patients come in and say, doc, you know, I've been sick for a week, I've been sick for 10 days, I've had symptoms for more than seven days. In those cases, the PCR actually is not a great test and the antibody test becomes much more important. And most data show that if you actually combine the PCR and antibody test at the same time because of the overlap, you increase your sensitivity to nearly 99%. But if you do either or, then it is very time dependent. So I hope that graph um, is able to, I'm a very visual person and I'm hoping that this has helped you guys. So I hope that explained and makes things much more clear. So to recap, if you are someone that wants to do early detection and it's been at least two or three days since you've had an exposure and you may not even know when your potential exposure may have happened, but if you're essentially asymptomatic and you want to just check to see if 
you may have had a recent exposure in the last five to seven days, a PCR test is still the best test. Now, if you're someone that's like, I was really sick three weeks ago and I got over it, or I had mild cold or flu symptoms two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago, and I got over it, and I'm wondering if I was exposed to COVID, the rapid antibody test is fantastic because we know after day 10 or 11, literally 99% of people have already developed their IgG, which is that secondary antibody. So if we do a test, and there's three ways to interpret that test, either the antibody will be negative on both of them. So the IgM and IgG is both negative. And if that's the case and your PCR is negative, that means not only you don't have COVID now, but you also have never been exposed to it in the past. Now, let's say we do a PCR and your PCR is positive, then we know that you're essentially in that zero to 10 day window since you've gotten the infection and you're still contagious because your PCR is positive. So you actually have the strands of virus in you. Other option is if your PCR is negative, so that means you no longer have the strands of virus, but you are IgM and IgG positive, then we know that you're immediately after that acute phase because your IgM is still positive. Now, if the test comes back where the PCR is negative, the IgM is negative, but your IgG is positive, IgG is that secondary antibody that I showed you that stays on uh, positive for weeks to months potentially and if it's only IgG positive then we can clearly say that not only you're not infectious anymore because the PCR is negative you don't have IgM so that means you're past that 10 day mark but now you've developed the really good antibodies that are essentially immune to COVID and most data that we show currently essentially states that you probably will retain that immunity for at least one to two years unless this thing mutates and becomes a new virus or a new strand of some sort. So I hope that answers your questions. We still do not have our rapid antibody tests delivered yet. Um, FDA is holding some of these tests up despite us having confirmation that we're going to get 3,000 of them. We have um, secured 10,000 of PCR testing. So for early detection, you know, up to that zero to 10 day mark, that is still available and it's available at all our offices. So I hope this was an informational piece for you guys to understand the difference between PCR testing and rapid testing. Please stay safe, wash your hands, and uh, I will continue to update with new information on our site. Have a great day.